Hello, thank you for watching this video on uh, summarizing quantitative variables. In this exercise, we're going to produce a stem and leaf display. Uh, using this data, uh, we have a sample of fictional starting salaries for business students. Uh, and in this exercise, we're going to use a leaf value of 1,000. Uh, what does that mean when we have a leaf value of 1,000? Well, we can scale the data really to any any level that we want. Let's uh, let's just start off, for example, uh, if we have a leaf value of one, just to provide some context. So here, with any uh, stem and leaf display, we have the vertical line to separate our leaves from our stems. So if we had a leaf value of one, well, now I can use this to identify the corresponding stems for this display. Uh, what I always like to do is look for the smallest um, data point in that sample to give me my smallest stem, and I think this is uh, this is going to be that smallest value. If I have a leaf value of one, in order to find my corresponding stem, I would ignore that very first digit, and here I have a stem of 3,949. My largest stem, so here I would look for my largest data point, Again, leaf value is one. I just ignore that first digit, and I have my largest stem, 7,566. Now in the stem and leaf display, well, I have everything that exists between those two values, so I'm gonna have a couple of thousand stems, uh, each one with perhaps one or two leaves. So it creates a very unnecessarily large stem and leaf display, uh, and it may be lacking in the amount of useful information that it conveys. So then we can scale it. And so let's say I have a, a leaf value of 10. So what that means now is when I find my largest and smallest stem value, instead of only ignoring the, f the first or the rightmost digit, now I ignore the rightmost two digits. And so now I'll ignore these two and these two, and I have uh, stems ranging from 394 to 735. Still uh, very large, still a couple of hundred stems. So if I go leaf value of 100, okay, now we're scaling it further. Ignore those rightmost three values. And now my stems range from 39 to 45. Uh, sorry, <laughs> 39 to 73. I don't know where 45 came from in my brain. Uh, so we still have here a, a couple of dozen stems. Now what this exercise is asking us to do is to scale this further still so that our leaf, uh, our leaf values are a thousand, which means that our stems now range from only three to seven. So let me just write these down. I'm gonna go from three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so here we've got our leaves now. Sorry, our stems. So how do we obtain our leaves? So what I'm gonna do is go through the data set and I'm going to identify all of those observations uh, whose first digit or leftmost digit is a three. I think I only have just that one. So here I have this one. And our leaf values are thousands. So what I'm going to do now is include as the leaf only looking at that digit that corresponds to a thousands. So this is going to be just a nine. These remaining digits don't ever appear. They don't show up. Uh, we don't even use them to round uh, any values. We're not rounding anything up. We're not rounding anything down. I'm only looking at that digit uh, for the leaf that is in that position to corresponding to the thousands. Okay, so this is a nine because this is 9,000 and the stem represents the 30. So we have 39,000 in this one observation. Okay, so there's, there's our first one. So I'm just going to scribble this out because I've already counted for it. I don't want to get, uh, make it easier for me to identify other observations here. So now let's look for a stem of a four. So I go through my data set and here's one, there's another one, another, got a few here. Okay, I think that's it for my fours. 
and now I just completely ignore these three digits on each of those observations. We don't need them for anything. And now I need to record uh, each of those digits uh, from smallest to largest. So here, let's see, I have, I think the smallest value is this one here, this five. So there's a five. And then I have two sixes. So I've got these three are recorded, uh, and then I have three nines. One, two, three nines. Okay, so we've got all of those ones taken care of now. Our next, uh, our next stem is the five. So I go through same exercise here. Find all of my data points whose first digit is a five. I think that's it. And I'm just going to scribble out those last three. We can ignore those. And now looking at the digit in the th position of thousands, we can record these from smallest to largest. So my smallest value there is the two. And then I have a five, a six, and a seven. So there's the five. That's this one. The six. This one, oh, here's another six up here. Oh, I forgot an, a three. I forgot this three here. So let me just remember here, I've got a five, six, and a six. So I'm gonna put in this three, five, six, and six. Okay, and now I have a seven and an eight. Good, I think that's all of them. Okay, and our next stem value uh, moving on is a six. So here's uh, one, two, three, four values there. Ignore those three digits in each. And I have a zero, a one, a four, and a five. Zero, one, four, and five. And finally, our last stem is the seven. And so here, let's get rid of this. I have uh, 73 and 71. So there's a one and there's a three. Okay, so there's our, uh, there's our stem and leaf diagram. Now, as we can see, what information does this give us? Well, we have here, uh, all of our data now is ordered by rank. So I have all of my individual observations are ranked from smallest to largest, and I can see uh, how frequent uh, observations occur in each of these different uh, ranks. So here I have only one observation at the smallest. I have uh, two observations up here. This is one and two observations uh, in the largest values, and most of my observations occur uh, in this range here. Uh, in the 40s and the 50,000s is what these correspond to. Okay, so it's a, it's a nice illustrative way of displaying our, our full data set. Uh, it's relatively easy to produce a stem and leaf diagram. Um, it, it provides a lot of the same information as a histogram in the sense that we've got all of our data sort of ranked from smallest to largest. And depending on how many observations exist, well, there was more and more and more leaves, and so we get some idea of the frequency uh, of observations. And so with that combination of the ranking and the frequency, we get some indication of the, the nature of the distribution of observations uh, across the, the range. So uh, hopefully this helps uh, make life a little bit easier for you next time you need to produce a stem and leaf diagram, uh, especially if uh, in those cases where you have to scale those leaves. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.